cannot be a Yoruba boy and vote for Ibu boy. I vote for Tinumbu. I support Tinumbu. You like it or not, I don't care. You know me, I am not afraid. You know why? Because if I see another Yoruba person, I will support. That is the only Yoruba person I have seen. Hear me. Journalists, if you want to write, write. If you want to attack me, attack me. I am not a bastard. I cannot be a Yoruba boy and go and vote for Ibo. I'm not afraid. I don't care. I'm not afraid. I have not eaten from Tinubu money. I'm not asking him for money. And I will never ask him for money. I don't need his help. God is my helper. But I am a prophet. If you are one of the youths they are bribing or some people they are gathering together. This is a message to my northern Christian brothers and sisters, specifically for you. Why? Because if you go to the south south, to the southeast, to the southwest, a Christian from northern part of Nigeria is a northerner. Simple. If there are a breakdown of blood orders in Enugu, they kill everybody, whether a Muslim or Christian, coming from the north. This is the record that is on ground. Nobody can deny this. Christians of northern extraction. Think wisely, act wisely, behave wisely. You have no business voting a southern candidate based on Christianity. When the Kwame was the vice president, 40, 40 something years ago, that is tribalism. For the northerners, for some people, Igbos have no share politically in the presidency. They must continue to serve us. Let me tell you, average Igbo man has human capital, just like our brother, Peter B. And if Peter B declared for president, any Igbo man that will put his vote to somewhere, that person must be chased out of this Igbo land. President is the president. Only You know, most often, I be even more wine. Yeah, most often, evils we are the cause of our problem. What is happening now? You know, there is every indications the handwriting of or is on spoke a few days ago and tried to speak lies against the southern church and again the southerners that we northerners that are christians will come to the south and will find it difficult to get a land to worship god and i want to say to you madi usman you're a liar that is not true i am a northerner and i am preaching here in the south And I want to say that it's time up for the lies that some of you have been lying. Mm -hmm. So all of this reminded me of a quote by Christopher Hutchins, which says, when people have tried everything and have discovered that nothing works, they tend to revert to what they know best, which will often be the tribe the totem or the taboo. Now, since its independence, Nigeria has experienced an avalanche of conflicts that resulted in loss of lives and unquantifiable damages on properties. No doubt, the violent nature of ethno-religious conflict, um, which often takes the form of riot, sabotage, assassination, armed struggles, guerrilla warfare, and sessions in Nigeria, or cessations rather in Nigeria, have implications on the political and economic development of the nation. Now, tribes and religion have such strongholds on people, um, uh, people's values and actions, and today we are asking, right? Can we as Nigerians, can we all just look beyond tribal and religious lines and just rise above these lines? Now, this is the question for tonight. Now, please 
Let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so this conversation, we have had it over and over and over again, and we'll continue to have it because it's something that needs to be said, and we have to say it. Now, three things or four things I picked out from different people that spoke in those videos. The Igbos are clamoring for a, a, a leader from Igbo extraction based on the fact that over the years they have been marginalized. It seemed like, you know, there's never, there's never uh, an opportunity that is given to them to, I mean, take on leadership roles. Because the, from what he said about Ikwere Madu being vice president many years ago, since then, no visible plan to actually um, zone the leadership of presidency towards the Igbos. So they are clamoring that vote an Igbo man because over the years we've all been marginalized. That's the, that's the cry that I heard from the clergyman that was talking. The Northerners, right, I, don't, I didn't understand his video, but when you start to say something around Christian Northerners mm -hmm. not being able to transact business in the South, that was, I think, it's a lie. I was born, because let me establish it well. Mm -hmm. I was born in Kaduna State. I grew up in Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. I lived in Kaduna State up until when I had to go to the university. And after university was when I left you know, um, Kaduna State. So a good chunk of maybe around 20, 21 years of my life was spent in the north, in the north right? Yeah. And I know that I have been through, I think, maybe a minimum of four or five riots, religious crisis, they call the Sharia crisis and all of that. And I know in those riots, when Christians were being killed, mm. guess what? Non-Northern um, non Muslims were being killed alongside well. Christians. Mm. Well. So at some point in the course of the war, the non-Northern, so like the Yoruba Muslims and the Edo Muslims mm. had to partner, they had to join forces with Christians to fight off the northern so Muslims. Tribal and Do you understand? Religious. So no, I'm just trying to explain Something to that man like that. that your analysis is not 100% correct because even the northerners do not see certain tribes. Some northerners do not see certain northern, uh, certain tribe, uh, Muslim, other tribes that are Muslims as, as Muslims. Muslims. They don't see them. So that needs to be really clear in the air. Mm -hmm. Then when the, um, when the guy said that um, the other man that talked about voting a Yoruba man, mm -hmm. that was just a clear, you know, ethnic um, disturbance that for me that I couldn't even understand. So we are all on this table. I am sure, I mean, we are from different parts of the world. I was raised not to see people. I, in fact, I hate that question, where are you from, right? I see people first as Nigerians, mm -hmm. right? Before I then ask you, oh, what extraction? Of, I don't even bother to ask. I said, maybe you, you choose to tell me. But when you not come with that line, that you are voting somebody just because he is a Yoruba man. Mm. I don't understand. You know, Igbos might be fighting ethnicity too, or dealing with ethnicity, but the message that I see from the Igbos is more of fighting marginalization. Okay, right. Do you understand? It's almost like you have relegated me to the back for too, too long. long. I need to be at the front burner. Yeah. But when you come out outright line with ethnic and religion um, lines, how do we even move from there? You know, so let me hear your thoughts, ladies. When you saw the videos, how did it come to you? <laughs> like, they don't bring people. I don't bring them. <laughs> because I, I'm a student. Last week, when they were talking about what's going to change about the UK anthem, and everybody said, it's just God Save Our King, that the song had been in existence since 1722, I think, if I'm correct or wrong, forgive me, but it's been there for centuries. They kept with it. It made me think of our old anthem. And I said to myself, I think I prefer that anthem to what we sing now, mainly because of this line. Through tribe and tongue, though tribe and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand. Hmm. Nigerians are all proud to serve our fellow motherland. I think there was a time when we all saw one another as one. one. Oh, yes. Even forgetting about the civil war, because I can't really say I understood what it was they were fighting. That, that maybe it was Bakasi at the time. Not civil war. What was that war that uh, Ojukwu became the, famous? The, for? Um, Biafra war. Biafra, Biafra war. war. 
Nigerians always saw one another as one. And they still do a lot of times when they're in other countries. This religious slash tribal disagreements is mainly about electoral positions. Politics. Politics. Thank you. I think that's what actually drove it to the point where people started saying, you can't treat me like a stepchild. We all have rights to this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure amongst us you can find someone decent enough to take a position. But it's about voting. So that has to be questioned as well. If we vote the way we're supposed to vote and things are clear, I don't think any tribe would be relegated to the back if votes were really um, counted mm. the way they're supposed to be and rigging doesn't happen. Then again, this uh, tribal thing that we talk about, I think if we are brothers keepers, regardless of where we are, when we are abroad, where you hear somebody speak and you're like, ah, you're Nigerian. I may not speak your language, but because you're Nigerian, Nigerian. you're my brother. When we're amongst um, foreigners, mm. Why can't we show the same love to one another here? Yeah. Mm. Let me hear your thoughts, <clears throat> Glory. You know, the topic today is, can Nigerians rise above tribal and religious lines? The answer is yes, they can, mm. if they choose to. If they choose to. And, you know, this, when I watch this video, somehow in my mind I'm thinking of Rwanda. If it's Rwandan president, you know what he did in Rwanda where all um, organized had to provide licenses before. He'll probably maybe come up with something. Okay, before you stand up on poop it and just talk like that, <laughs> you need to have a license or put some regulation to stop people talking just out of ignorance. Mm. Because I see the first person talking about Yorubas. I don't know. It's gross ignorance. How would you stand and say such a thing? He's not speaking for and me. And like, so I feel like we Nigerians, first off, we are, we are one. We are a nation before tribe. So in my fam, if my family is watching now, mm -hmm. they can bear witness to this. Sometimes when they ask me, oh, um, are you from the East? I'll say I'm a global citizen. I don't, it's not about religion for me mm -hmm. because I see people first as humans. It's about your character. It's yes. not about where you come from. So I've met Nigerians that are exhibited a kind of character which it's not okay. And mm -hmm. I've seen, I've, I've made friends with mm -hmm. the Muslims that are good better and, and better. So it's not, if we can take off, listen, I, this like a plea to Nigerians, mm -hmm. this 2023, if we can, I feel like religion, religious organizers, our religious leaders are supposed to guide perspective of good governance. That's what they're supposed to stand in the pulpit and talk about. Not, what, what, not genocide. inciting genocide. tribalism genocide. and all of that. So if we Nigerians, listen, we have seen enough, we've suffered enough. It's time for us to see what do we really want? Mm. What is going to make this nation better? Mm. It's bigger than tribalism now. It is bigger than religion. who came from mm -hmm. where. It's bigger than religion. About who can give us what we need? Who can take this nation out of this struggle we find ourselves now? Mm. If we can get to that point and think about it and within ourselves we judge who rightly fits this position mm -hmm. at this time, then we we'll rise above this tribalism and religious. Absolutely. No, my fanga, let me quickly hear your thoughts, then we'll hmm. take a quick break. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm shaking my head because um, this is a very touchy mm -hmm. conversation to have. And I don't know when Nigerians are going to get it. To know that when I see some of these things, I, it's like they're playing with your head. Mm. Some people have designed something and created this confusion so while you are busy struggling they are cutting away with your goods mm. they're cutting away with your resources your they're future. taking away your, your future destiny. the future of your issues. children mm -hmm. when i hear statements like this like some of the cler clergy man mm. you know pro professed i just see an abuse of power mm -hmm. because yes your opinion you might think that it's your opinion but you're a person of influence, mm -hmm. yes. whether yes, you're yes, conscious yes, of it yes. or not. So, well, he's you very say, conscious of it, trust me. <laughs> I want to, let me just give that now, whether of you are conscious of it or not. Mm. When you say things like this, mm. you pretend as if people will not take it verbatim and wrong with it. When we are busy fighting ourselves, when these people 
are sharing your money. They mm -hmm. don't know tribe. They mm -hmm. don't know ethnicity. They don't know religion. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everybody is one. Mm -hmm. So I need Nigerians to wake up. First and foremost, we are one nation. You said Conduct you don't like, freedom. you prefer the old I do. Uh, 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 national uh, anthem. National anthem. Mm. I love the one that we're using because right there, mm. one of the lines says, one nation bound in freedom, freedom. Mm. peace and unity. Mm. Mm. It is a choice. It is a choice. Is when freedom? we choose to be free, mm. when we choose to be have peace amongst ourselves in spite of our diversity. Mm. When we choose to have unity mm. because we have called ourselves a nation, yes. that is when we can thrive. That is when we can see the, 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 the resources that we each bring and how we can benefit from one another. Mm. It is not only when I need something from you. You're saying that, oh, that you're not going to vote for somebody X, Y, Z, mm. but you can use their money. Mm -hmm. You can use their resources. Mm -hmm. You can use the things that, that they are blessed with. Yes. But you don't want to be associated with them. Yes. How low and shallow your thinking can be. Mm. So let's, let's, take, this kind of let's take your line mm. and the line that I like and change our anthem and start a new narrative which will become our mission statement. Let's, let's take a break, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to hear the thoughts of our viewers, right? Mm -hmm. I have a few things I would like to bring because... Just don't forget that this is all stemming from a common threat that the, all the political leaders are you know, kind of guilty of. Yeah, no, there's a common threat that is disturbing them. <laughs> Stay with us. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, is our ladies' night out when discussing the topic, can Nigerians rise above tribal and religious lines? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 7749 Remember the rules, turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear ourselves. So there's a common threat in the room, right? Mm -hmm. The elephant, the big elephant in the room is the man, Peter Obi, that seems to be mm -hmm. getting the wave of all the, and the support of a, a lot of young people, people. right? Yeah. Um, so he's the common threat. And um, I've, I've also tried to study Peter Obi in its, in, as a, a person. Mm -hmm. And a few times I've heard people talk about um, the, interactions. the interactions with him mm -hmm. and also the kind of people around him. So you need to understand that as a leader, right, you must also be first um, clean mm. of any form of... So nobody can hold you to say this thing you're used to. It. If somebody comes to Uwa now, mm. you cannot say I'm tribalistic. Mm. Because or you discriminate. The closest of my friends, they are not even anywhere near my tribe. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I need him because he's the biggest threat to most of these political leaders, and that's why we're seeing all these agendas flying mm. all over the place. I need him to also reevaluate how all the people that he's brought around his campaign team, the people that are closest to him. You need to be able to have diversity. Is in it your tribal? Team. Yeah. You have to have diversity in your team. But I wanted to say something because on Monday we had a guest after the show we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, how a particular country was this Switzerland or so that had like six that no, had like six or something they six system, yes you understand where they so all like is it possible that maybe a country? maybe Be if true. we get to that point where we just say you know what let's go back to a regional system where every region pro provides a leader is it possible and that we might get yeah, because people it can then grow on us. calm because if we are talking about marginalization I don't ever be president you and Nigerians we are a lot Right? Our statistics so are staggering. In Kaduna alone, I hear there are 400 languages. For goodness sake, I always advocate that. Can we just have a one language system in this country? Because Maybe. it is, no, because those are the things that, so the, the, the diversity is mm. supposed to be our biggest strength. Mm. But every single time, I have seen it bringing a lot of um, conflict, a lot of problem, more and more. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm thinking, you know, can we go to a system where we speak one language? Mm -hmm. We have one, you know, one, one vision, one goal, one everything, right? And everybody just understands that this is the mission, this is who you are. I'm Nigerian first. Take out this 
uh, when you're filling your form, take out that local government yes. where you're coming yes. from and all of those things. Yes. Take it out, right? Maybe if we get to that point, we might just find a solution to this. Because let me tell you something. Politicians will always play this game tribal lines and religious yes. lines because yeah. they know it's almost it's a like strategy. it's a trigger. It's, a it's an auto it distracts you from the real yeah, issues. It's an auto trigger. Once they mm. mention it like that, people lose their senses. Even mm -hmm. people that have that have PhDs, I've yeah. mm. seen them argue nonsense, nonsense on top of religious. tribe and religion. Mm. So how do we rise above this thing? You said that we should all be able to speak one language. With the many languages in Nigeria, the only language I would suggest PG. we can speak. No, is love. Oh, okay. Or humanity. <laughs> We can't change our mother tongues mm. and we can't change the diversity well, in our communication, uh, whatever you call it. The language we should speak in is love mm. and love for humanity. Mm. The things these people are doing that they think is so innocent for a Yoruba pastor or whatever that guy says he is to stand on a pulpit and speak the way he speaks. This is how genocide starts. If you are, so if you are not, he's inciting yeah. And war. the government will not see him to go and arrest him. He should be arrested, actually, because what he cannot do that is different. Hmm. What he cannot do that is different. He was fighting for his people, trying to say that, oh, we should think about what, what did he do that is different. He's inciting wars. And this is how genocide started. I sent it in the group the other day, just a few days ago, saying, oh, you should watch this movie called Tears in the sky. Mm -hmm. Apparently that movie was to over 20 years ago. I didn't realize it. I thought it was new. And they were talking about the Biafran War. was the focus. And it was all about tribe against tribe. You should be very careful, like you said, when you have a platform and you know that you can influence thoughts and you speak, there should be a law against it. Seriously. Like I said, Idi Amin said, freedom of speech you can have but freedom after speech is what I can guarantee. Mm. Let me take also, our very first quickly. caller quickly for mm. the day. Um, okay. Basi, Come back to me. Um, mm. from Basi, are you there? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, we lost him. Go okay, ahead. let me go ahead. United Kingdom, diversity. Mm. Scottish, Welsh, everybody Irish. speaking di different languages. And they still see themselves as one. Languages would always make yeah. us, yes, you can't change it. But that's, the, that's your mother tongue. That's so your mother that's tongue. That's the way you sound. Even oh. me, Yoruba, yeah, the, what words. I will call Otita, someone else will call it Akboti. Mm. Different languages, but we're still Yoruba. When we say Wazobia, people will say, no, be only Wazobia, they for Nigeria. Yes, I don't so know. how are we going to stop this thing if we just don't speak one language called love? love. Absolutely. Nama, <laughs> let me come to you. Come back to Gloria. Find more points. <laughs> I mean, it's just very sad that this card, this game, mm. is, is a reoccurring game, game. Mm. You know, especially when there's elections coming up. And, and I really pray that our people will rise above the mentality that we've been fed mm. over the years. I keep saying that this is learned behavior. Yeah. They taught us there was a, I mean, I grew up in the north. Ah, my darling. Hold on, hold on. I thought. tell people that, okay. <laughs> Let me typically take Kalio left before we lose him again. Kalio from Lagos State, thank you for calling. Oh, sugar, we lost it again. Go ahead. Oh, wow. I grew up, I grew up in, in, in the north. When people ask me where am I from, it's a very, very tricky ah. question because I grew up in every single part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you call the north, I grew up there. If you call the east, I was born there. If you call the south, I schooled there. Yeah, I'm married there. You know, and, there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm married in the south, south. So which one am I going to claim? Mm. Mm. Do you understand? So literally, I can connect with any, any I've traveled across the country all of the parts of nigeria for one reason or the other mm -hmm. and that's why i can confidently say that i'm a nigerian mm. because i have tasted of the the rich culture mm. and i can identify with the people Everybody. even though they are not where, where i'm from mm. but i can connect because eventually what we all are looking for is the same thing mm. we are all looking for a better life Absolutely. we're all looking for good quality education for our children we're looking for great infrastructure mm. we're looking for everything good 
So why can't we collectively just be one? Let me take um, Kalio. I think he's back again. Ah, we keep losing the call. Why I think there's something wrong with our phone lines. Yeah. Come together and say, mm. like Uti will say, what do we want? Mm. So you know what you just said, because I'll come to you, Gloria. Uh, because you see, exposure is very powerful. Yeah. A lot of these people that are continuously being fooled into this religious or tribal division. Mm. If you check, they are highly ignorant. High level of ignorance. Some people have not even crossed Lagos. Mm. They've not even gone to Nibado. Let me take Shino and I'll continue my thoughts. Shino, you're live. Yeah, good evening. Hi, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. If I did my first time of listening to oh. this program, I'm wow. so happy to be part of it this evening. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, uh, you know, pertaining to the videos you played on the program tonight, mm. you know, one thing I do tell people when it comes to Nigerian issue is that people use emotion to attack things. Mm. We don't look very well and we don't listen very well. Mm. That's why we are in this mess today. Mm. You know, I too, I school in, in the north not central to be precise. And most of my classmates then, they can testify to it that I've never for a day, you, you know, attack any tribe. I see everybody as one idea. And that thing took me through all my state in that environment. Mm. If a Igbo man or Yoruba man had issue my class, they will come to me to come and say to if they die issue. Then, you no, know, once we see ourselves as one country, Absolutely. as a brother, sister, Thank we you. will not be into this mess Absolutely. anymore. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shina. You know, religion, people always say religion is one of our problems. Religion is not the problem. Mm -hmm. It's individual personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank it's you, how you grow up from your family. Absolutely. Whatever you learn from the home is what you replicate outside. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank I you so much. I was born you. and brought up Muslim <laughs> environment. But if you come to my family, I have cousins that are Christians. We go to church together. We attend the same mosque together when it's during the Ramadan uh, period. Mm. You know, the way we think things, we take it very easy. Before any problem can be solved in Nigeria, we start from home, hmm. not from outside. Absolutely. That's just the biggest thing I can do. Absolutely. Me. Thank you so much, Shino. You Thank see, you. And, and I mean, he's just re trying to go to where I was going with the conversation. Hmm. Because you see, ignorance, right? A lot of people have not even crossed. They don't even, they, they've not left the sh leg In fact, within Lagos, they've not even gone around Lagos, yes. not to talk of going to Ibadan. Mm -hmm. So some people don't, they don't even have that exposure. And trust me, when you are exposed well enough in Nigeria, you, there is no way you will not have religious tolerance. And that's why the, the military or, or tribal tolerance, mm -hmm. that's why the military, right? People like the Mobasa, they have friends all over Nigeria because of that mm -hmm. exposure. They're exposed right. there to mm -hmm. all parts of the country. This was what the NYSC scheme yeah. was supposed yeah. to address with help because a lot Let of people, see people where everybody have is. never been so to you have never so you, you've Nigeria. never experienced another culture. So mm. how would you know? So when people are telling me tomorrow that Northern Nigeria, this I can't relate. I, can't. I cannot relate because I lived, I I'm, grew up, I ate, and I, was I dined. We danced together. We laughed together. Mm. And so how are, are you going to tell me the people that I know and I've lived with and I've experienced? You are just based. Basing your assumptions based on head knowledge, mm. right? I know I have lived it, I've experienced mm -hmm. it. So it is difficult for somebody to bring a tribal or religious lines to me mm -hmm. because it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna set in the foundation. Well, unfortunately, in. we can't see that on your face head. that you have that knowledge. You understand? God so, forbid us having disturbances. Nobody knows that you've lived amongst them. Yeah. So, so, uh, so the point I'm trying to make now mm. is, can we? start to because again this history taken out of our system mm. right also is a big issue because now a lot of people have very very um shallow knowledge mm -hmm. of so what nigeria is just seen from from so you're seeing from one compass being, uh, let me take suleiman from abuja then i'll come to you glory hi good evening hi good evening thank you for joining us Our major problem in Nigeria is not religion. We should focus on love. 
Love you. Yeah. And what to make the Nigeria a great form for every one of you. I'm not sure about this, but this is a bad guy. And if you have not done Nigeria president in the past, mm -hmm. I'll start doing it. Pull a hand on it. I'll start doing it. Let's say try to put up this. That's a start. Let's say try to eat. And if for adventure, it will not meet up. Hey, we're not, not going to start this one. Not the question. And okay, every time I've done it now, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yes, we do. So if other tribes are done, let's give it a try. Let's let the last last tribe and let's see if what will be the outcome of that. Mm. So if for example, the outcome is not going by all Nigeria, we not have a self choice on that. Okay, what is our problem? Can we invite China or who that come and rule us? Mm. If possible, mm. if for example, we not rule ourselves. That 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 that. that, that, that um, but I'm part of this people of the bar alpha, people, uh, south alpha, the bar, not the not west, not north west, all these camps. When election is done, that's what we have to do. This one is the Yoruba, this one is the this one is the As soon as election is done, everybody comes in one more. Everybody shows down, you can't hear anybody to ask for a fighting for a religion, for anything. Thank you. As soon as election is approached, you see. It's always coming up during the election season. Absolutely. You are 100% right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so, <laughs> Gloria, I was going to come to you. You know, so in, in finding the solution, because we're running out of time, like when we're having great topics like this, there's never time enough. What would you say? How, how do we start to tackle this? Because we've talked about that some of these things is linked to ignorance. So how do we even start the process of educating yes. okay. the minds of people. Conversations yeah. like this Absolutely. is what we need more often. Mm. I think media houses have a huge role to play, Absolutely. especially for the innocent. Like you said, some most people are not really exposed. Mm. So radio, radio stations, they have a huge role to play. Even you and I, when you are in a conversation with someone you feel is ignorant, just speak out and educate that person mm -hmm. and make the person understand that this is not just about where did this person come from or tribe or anything. It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about who is competent enough. It's about who is who is doing well, who yes. has a proven track record. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I feel like we in our conversations have to educate people we feel like are That's ignorant about touching. all of this reality. Let me quickly yes. take Joseph from Adamawa State. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. <laughs> Go ahead. Joseph, you're live. We have like one minute to go. Oh, it's gone. Oh, keep losing calls. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly take comments first, quickly. Let me take this one. This is my own comment. <laughs> this song that everybody is so excited about, wake up, wake up, collect yeah, your money. Mm -hmm. I suggest we change it to wake up, wake up, collect your freedom mm -hmm. from mental slavery. Absolutely. Shabba. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> This one, I shouldn't even take it. Why? On the whales that, I don't know what Fulu is talking about. On the whales that died in Australia, they died in sympathy to the death of Queen Elizabeth, wow. says Fulu. <laughs> Until we stop seeing ourselves as enemies or problems to our progress, we will not rise. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I have uh, not comments. very lengthy ones. I see. <laughs> mm. All right. So good evening, ladies. Daniel. I'm surprised that religious leaders can go as low as that. Mm. Wait a minute. They talk about being children of God. Mm -hmm. Are we going to di a different heaven and have a different God? Mm -hmm. We are in 2022 and we're still talking about tribe and religion. Now, both Northerners, Southerners, Christians and Muslims are finding it difficult to live well. Access Forex ETC. Mm -hmm. We need to engage more in educating the populace that politicians are brothers when it comes to sharing money. But to grab power, we are divided into different groups. Mm. I weep for my nation. I and my siblings have Yoruba names, mm. as my father believed in one Nigeria. Mm. I hope we'll get it right in 2023. Don't mind the evil ones. Good job, ladies. This is from BC. Then we Let have another one. Let okay. from Nasara. You have a minute. Motion, you're live. Go ahead. You're live. Yes, I just want to contribute. Go ahead, quickly. Issue of... Uh, Go ahead, Mashut. You have a okay. minute. Yes, I'm with you. I'm, with you. I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> yes, good evening. Good evening. This Mashut from Latvia. Go ahead. Yes, just want to contribute. Based on what uh, religion 
religious problem that we have in this country. The media, the media need to do a lot. Because the issue when the uh, APC presents a candidate, Muslim Muslim ticket, the way the media handle the issue is not something good. Thank you. When we are preaching that religious tolerance, the way the media house Thank Take the so issue, much. do Thank issue that we love ourselves. Absolutely, we need to run. All now. right, so I have to come up. So that is where Thank you. Thank you, we have issue in this country. Go ahead. Um, this is from Ade. He says, good evening, ladies. I can't believe these messages are coming from our leaders. Religious hurt our leaders in their own way. This is hate crime against humanity, mm -hmm. tribe, and religion. They all need total counseling and therapy. Absolutely. Oh. All right. So says no country survives yes. with two strong religion existing side by side in it. Mm. Go ahead, um, Noma. Okay, this is from Mr. Wayambi. It's a very lengthy one. It says, good evening, ladies. Rising above tribal and religious lines is possible in Nigeria, albeit a tall order. I am an incurable optimist who thinks every national challenge is surmountable. Besides, there are empirical examples of nations that have successfully bridged ethno-religious cleavages. Rwanda, for example, the nation was negative with bloodshed in 1994, but rallied itself back from that horrible precipice and became a united, peaceful nation. The Hutus and the Tutsis now live as brothers and sisters in trust, Thank tolerance, you, and togetherness. I think we have to stop it there. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Um, tribe and politics. In a nutshell, the answer is no. People feel that the, if there is no tribalism, no leadership, people do not like our national anthem because we do not practice it. Mm. Everything is done through eye service. I don't know if I am the right... If I'm right, I think Peter Obi is not tribalistic. He looks like someone who is available for all, irrespective of your tribe. My name is Daniel Ilo. Quickly, have one last comment. Okay, the very last one, I think, is, well, it's Go a ahead. compliment to me. Concerning today's topic, it is, it, it is possible, but it is difficult because of the mindset we have been programmed with. As Laide said, the language we need is love, humanity, and empathy. That's from Gifts, Chris. Chris, on YouTube. on YouTube. Thank you so much, Thank ladies. I think we had a fantastic conversation. We're going to keep this conversation. People will be tired of us talking about it, but we will talk and tire. Now, before we go, thank you, Norma, Glory, uh, Lady. Follow us on Instagram as Way Show Africa interact with us. Further drop a comment or more importantly, follow all our engagement. We're sorry we couldn't take a lot of calls. The lines are really buzzing. I can hear it ringing in my ear. <laughs> now, if we missed today's quote, here it is again. You can no longer see or identify yourself solely as a member of a tribe, but as a citizen of a nation, of one people working together towards a common purpose. This is a very powerful quote. Let's start to see ourselves as Nigerians first before any other thing. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we'll bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.